in today's lecture we are going to discuss about DNA damage. So, before going to DNA damage let us just re uh, recap what is DNA, I mean the basic things all of you know what is DNA and what are the double helical structure, what is an Greek model, what are the important components everything. But according to this particular, I mean what is pertaining to this particular topic uh, we need to focus on three important components of the DNA. The first one is what the ribose sugar, the second one is uh, the nitrogenous basis and the third one is what the phosphate group. So, the ribose sugar will combine with various nitrogenous bases which gives rise to what the nucleoside. This nucleoside combines with the phosphate group which gives give rise to uh, the nucleotide. So, many nucleotides combine together to form your DNA that is nothing but your polynucleotide. So, when I am talking about DNA damage, the what is the meaning of DNA damage? It is the physical or chemical damage or the physical and chemical distortion which is happening in the DNA is called what DNA damage. So, which are all the possible sites where in which uh, the damage can happen? It can be either ribose sugar, it can be a nitrogenous base, it can be the phosphate group. Any of these co three components will be targeted. So, once these components are targeted if any damage which happens into the DNA the total integrity of the DNA will change or the integrity will be lost ok. So, therefore, uh, the definition for DNA damage goes like this the DNA damage is nothing but the physical and chemical distortions happens in the DNA ok. It, it may be a physical distortion ok the total structure can be changed or the chemical distortion the individual chemical can be changed. So, that combined together called as what DNA damage. So, it is the physical and chemical distortions which happens in DNA is called what DNA damage right. So, if a DNA is damaged, so we all know about central dogma right. So, what, what is central dogma? A DNA will, will give rise to a DNA that is called replication. So, the DNA will give rise to RNA that is called transcription, the RNA can give back to or it can produce what DNA that is called reverse transcription and this mRNA can couple with tRNA and RNA and can give rise to what uh, uh, the protein. So, this is what the central dogma. So, once the DNA gets affected either physically or uh, it can be chemically what will happen the entire, entire central dogma will be affected that means that there will be arrest of replication. So, the DNA cannot multiply and there will not be what uh, uh, the uh, offsprings cannot be produced or the offsprings will be produced with what effect a defect DNA. Transcription it is an important process for the production of what the protein. So, the proteins are the integral part both structurally as well as genotypically. Therefore, if the protein production does not happen properly the organism may die. So, the transcription and translation if it is affected the total life cycle of the uh, organism only will be completely changed. So, the major consequences of uh, DNA damage is nothing but the replication arrest transcription arrest, translation arrest totally you will be getting an altered protein. It may be a lethal protein, it may, uh, may be a non-lethal protein, it all depends upon how intensely this DNA damage which has happened ok. So, we discussed two things, what is the definition of DNA dam damage? It is the physical and chemical distortions of the DNA right. What are the consequence, biological consequences of the DNA damage? There will be arrest of replication, arrest of transcription, arrest of translation because of that what will happen? Cell division may be in inhibited. So, because of that there will be a production of altered protein or it will be a defective protein therefore, the total uh, multiplication um, and metabolism of the organism will be completely altered or it will be affected. So, that is what DNA damage and if you are seeing DNA damage the major damage which will happen in the phosphate group as well as what the bases. These are all the two important target. Ribose sugar also will be attacked. We will be discussing that later. So, the major target is nothing but what the bases. So, what are all the bases? It includes purines and pyrimidines. If you talk about purines, what are all purines? Adenine and guanine are purines. Thiamine and cytosine are what? Pyrimidines. Ok. So, when we are describing it in the examination, we should uh, structurally indicate where exactly this damage is happened. Because of that damage, that particular component, how it has been changed. So, it is essential to know the structure of various purines and pyrimidines. Ok. So, let us see how to remember these type of these uh, purines and pyrimidines ok. Let us take uh, adenine or purines and pyrimidines if you take what is the major difference between purines and pyrimidine is the purines have chemically I am talking that is the purines have a double ring structure, pyrimidines have a single ring structure you can make out over here. So, this adenine guanine it is not it is having two rings. So, that is why I told it is two double ring structure 
and pyramids if you see it is nothing but what it is a single ring structure okay right so if you see both purines and pyrimidines all the purines and pyrimidines will be having two important components in the structure one i already told you that is it contains what a ring it can be a single ring or double ring so in case of purine it will be double ring in case of uh, pyrimidine it is what a single ring and the second most important thing is each and every base will be having one exocyclic functional group okay it will contain what an exocyclic functional group so we already discussed that it will be a, a ring ring means it is nothing but cycle apart from this uh, ring there will be some functional groups you know functional groups right so what are our functional groups uh, can you give some examples of functional group if it is alcohol it is roh it is amine or nh2 r double bond co i mean r bond co r it is nothing but keto right so you know about functional c double bond o right so there are so many uh, functional groups are available so each and every base will be having one cyclic group that is either it will be a single ring or double ring and it contains what an exocyclic functional group okay yeah let us take the first one that is adenine so this is the ring okay it's very easy to remember so if you see from the left hand side c n c n c double bond c which is connected into the second ring that is c n c n which is connected into the first ring this is the structure okay when you write it it will be clear for you that is you how to put the skeleton first the ring skeleton the ring skeleton goes like this c n c n c double bond c n c n okay connect it everything okay right after that the exocyclic functional group which is present see you can see the numbering here the first one is the first position is n1 second position is c2 n3 c4 c5 c6 next the uh, next ring that is n7 c6 n9 uh, sorry c8 n9 like that it, it goes okay so you have to write the structure first means the skeleton first right then you have to put the exocyclic functional group please remember the exocyclic functional group which is present in adenine is 6 amino what is the meaning of 6 amino in the sixth position there will be one amino group clear so if you put that that is the structure of adenine only thing you have to balance it so you take the sixth carbon what is the valency of the carbon carbon has four valency so you just count that 1 2 3 initially when you put this skeleton you won't be having this double bond okay you, you have to just count 1 2 3 how much more valency has to be satisfied one more you are putting a double bond when you write and do it uh, you will be uh, very thorough with how to uh, write the structure of what adenine only thing you have to remember it is a double ring and the exocyclic functional group is 6 amino okay so that is what adenine then coming to guanine so the guanine has two exocyclic functional group one is you can see in sixth position a keto and in the second position there is an amino okay rest all same like what adenine okay it is a double ring only thing what you have to remember the six amino sorry six keto two amino is called what guanine okay in the uh, what, what we have discussed in adenine six amino in case of guanine what is it it is six amino two sorry six keto two amino that's what uh, that's what the uh, structure of what guanine coming to the next one that is nothing but thiamine okay before going to thiamine i will just discuss about cytosine so it will be easy for you to remember because it is just opposite to guanine what was there in guanine it, there is six amino was there okay and here it is what uh, guanine it contains what the six keto and two amino just opposite to that it will be six amino and two keto is nothing but what cytosine okay i'll repeat once again so what is the first one adenine it is 6 amino in case of guanine it is 6 keto and 2 amino in case of cytosine just opposite to guanine see so don't uh, see this particular numbering you always start numbering from n okay the n is 1 c is 2 next n is 3 next n is next c is 4 uh, next c is 5 and next c is 6 just like that you remember so that it it will be easy for you to write in the examination that is it is 6 amino and 2 keto in case of cytosine just opposite to that is guanine what is that it is 6 keto and 2 amino in case of guanine okay right we'll come to the the next one that is thiamine thiamine has 6 keto 2 keto and 5 methyl 
okay there are three exocyclic functional group in case of adenine one exocyclic functional group that is nothing but six amino in case of burning two exocyclic functional groups were there that is six keto and two amino in cytosin just opposite to gonine that is six amino two keto was there in thiamine it contains what two keto group one is in six i told you that do not th see this particular number eight you have to think about uh, from the nitrogen one carbon two then nitrogen one uh, nitrogen three then carbon 4, next carbon 5, next carbon 6 like that you just think so that you, it will be easy for you to write. So, okay. so, 6 keto, 2 keto means 2 comma 6 keto and 5 methyl. Okay, in the sixth, second position as well as in the sixth position keto group will be there and in the fifth position what will be there? Methyl group that is called what? Thiamine. Okay. So, once you remove methyl group from thiamine you will get what uracil it is I mean it has masked the air so you remove methyl group you put one H over there so that is called what uracil that is once the methyl de demethylation of thiamine methyl group is gone you will get what thiamine uh, sorry uracil clear so these are all the various uh, bases which are present in the DNA so please recall once again adenine 6 amino gonine 6 keto 2 amino cytosin 6 amino 2 keto thiamine 2 comma 6 keto and 5 methyl remove the methyl group you will get what uracil okay so this is what the structure of bases okay right next coming to DNA damage I told you what is DNA damage it is the structural change or the physical or chemical alteration in the DNA is called what DNA damage so according to the syllabus what we have we have to describe about four types of DNA damage one is deamination the second one is alkylation and the third one is oxidative damage and the fourth one is pyrimidine dimorphomation. Okay. So, what is deamination? The name itself indicates what is it? It is nothing but removal of amino group from the DNA is called what? Deamination. So, where the amino group will be present? I told you you have to concentrate on three important components in the DNA. One is the ribose sugar and the second one is what? Nitrogenous base. Next one is the phosphate group. In ribose sugar, there is no amino group. So, there is no, I mean it will not uh, damage your DNA in the ribose uh, sugar region. And nitrogenous bases, you just see here in the nitrogenous bases, adenine has nitrogenous base, I mean amino group and gonine has amino group in the second position and uh, cytosine is also having amino group in where in the uh, sixth position so these are the three important bases will be affected due to uh, deamination process we will discuss that so alkylation so as the name indicates uh, addition of alkyl group into the dna it can be either in the base or it can be in the phosphate group that is called what alkylation we will describe in detail later so al deamination means removal of amino group alkylation means what addition of alkyl group oxidative damage means uh, a damage which has happened in the dna due to ROS. ROS means reactive oxygen species. There will be hydroxyl radical, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, all those things we will discuss that later. So, now you understand that what is oxidative damage? It is the damage which is produced due to what? The reaction of the DNA with what? The reactive oxygen species. Next comes pyrimidine dimer. So, pyrimidine dimer that is due to the absorption of ultraviolet radiation what will happen the adjacent thiamines will pair each other we have discussed that in the previous classes that is in the DNA repair mechanism we have seen uh, uh, that there is a production of what cyclobutane ring between two different adjacent thiamine you just see here uh, this is thiamine right one more thiamine is coming adjacent to this this particular thiamine you just think like that so what will happen C double bond C here also C, I mean in other, another time in also C double bond C will be there that will be combined together you will get what a cyclobutane ring. Do not worry about that we will discuss about that later. Okay. So, so the D, we just to discuss that there are four kinds of DNA damage we have to describe one is deamination that is removal of amino group, alkylation, addition of alkyl group, oxidative damage happens due to the reaction of oxygen radicals of free oxygen radicals with the DNA the next one is pyrimidine dimer that is due to the absorption of what ultraviolet radiation the adjacent thiamines will get paired. So, in this class we are mainly going to discuss about deamination process. So, as we have discussed what is deamination deamination is nothing but removal of an amino group from the DNA ok an amino group will be removed from the DNA that particular process is called what deamination. 
So, the deamination mainly happens in say I told you three components you have to keep it in mind whenever we are discussing this particular topic. What are all three things? Ribose sugar, is it having the amino group? No, definitely not. The next comes nitrogenous bases, is it having amino group? Yes, which are all the components have amino groups over there? Adenine, then guanine and cytosine. So, that those reactions will happen over here. And uh, what about phosphate group? No, it contains only PO4, therefore there is no amino group. So, this deamination mainly happens in three particular bases. One is adenine, the second one is guanine and third one is cytosine. Okay. So, the agents which cause deamination in the DNA is called deaminating agents. Okay. So, mutagens. What do you mean by mutagens? The agent which causes mutation. The same way the agent which causes deamination is called what? Deaminating agent. Okay, so the major deaminating agent which will be used in vitro for uh, DNA mutation is nothing but nitrous acid that is HNO2 and hydroxylamine NH2OH. These are the two important uh, deaminating agent which plays a role in creating what deamination process in case of DNA. So, we discussed what are all the possible bases in case of uh, uh, possible components in case of DNA uh, deamination process, it is not ribose sugar, it is not phosphate group, it is only three bases which contains amino group that is one is adenine and the second one is what guanine and the third one is cytosine. Okay, so, these are all the three prone bases or the three prone areas of DNA deamination process due to what the various deaminating agent. Let us see the first deamination process what happens in case of adenine. So, once the adenine, so where is the amino group in case of adenine? 6 amino. Okay. So, amino group is removed from there. So, there what will happen is there will be an addition of OH group. Okay. Amino is removed, what will be added? OH group will be added. right? So, because of the deamination of this adenine, the adenine will be converted. This is no longer a, a normal base or a normal adenine in case of DNA. It will be converted into a, some other component because of the removal of adenine uh, amino group and that is called what iposanthine. Deamination of the adenine will give rise to a chemical compound called what iposanthine. Okay, let us see what, what exactly, how exactly the iposanthine forms. This is what adenine, 6 amino we just told that. In the 6th position what is there? Amino group is there. Deaminating agent you are going to add that is nitrous acid or what uh, uh, hydroxylamine. So, what will happen whatever the NH2 group or this a dotted square you can see the NH2 group will be removed and what will be added over there? OH will be added. So, once the NH2 group and is removed and OH is added into the base that particular adenine will be converted into another chemical compound that is called what? Hypoxanthine. So, what is the structure of hypoxanthine? Remove NH2 from adenine and add OH in the 6th position you will get what? Hypoxanthine. Okay? Right. So, the adenine, deamination of the adenine results in the formation of what? Hypoxanthine. Okay? So, the hypoxanthine is no longer an adenine. Right? So, it behaves like a some other component and the problem here is this will have mispairing that is adenine has to pair with what? Thiamine. Now, the adenine is changed into another compound what is that? Hypoxanthine. So, the hypoxanthine will not pair with thiamine instead of that it pairs with cytosine. Okay? So, adenine has to pair with thiamine. What happened? Adenine has been changed due to deamination. So, the adenine is no longer behaves like a normal adenine, it behaves like a guanine, hypoxanthine behaves like a guanine because it pairs with, it is not an analog of guanine, but it is having the pairing property with what? Cytosine. So, you know the DNA replication process, a organism is there, inside DNA is there, the DNA will get duplicated due to replication and this will be equally distributed into the daughter cell. Now, initially the organism was having what? Adenine pairs with thiamine. Now, the adenine has been changed, adenine has converted into X so that is nothing but or HX so that is called hypoxanthine. So, when in the next replication cycle, this strand will unwind. So, one strand will be having what HX, another strand will be having what C means cytosine, right. So, when the replication cycle follows, what will happen is this AT will be converted into GC. How it will happen, we will see. This is what the reaction we have seen in case of deamination NH2 has converted into OH. You just see in the first cycle you start from the left hand corner that is AT. This is the original organism. There is no damage for adenine. So, that is AT. Now, what has happened? It has been treated with what? Nitrous acid or hydroxylamine or it has been encountered with nitrous acid or hydroxylamine. So, this adenine has been converted into 
uh, here instead of B u you just think that it is nothing but H x ok. Instead of B u it is H x what is H x it is nothing but what hydroxyl amine ok. Instead of B u it is hydroxyl amine you just think that ok right. Now, A t is there right ok all you come back that is uh, you do not get uh, um, confused you just come back here once again A t is there. A is converted into what H x okay, ok. Now, A t is converted into H x pairs with what thiamine initially it was A pairs with thiamine. Now, A got damaged once the A got damaged A is converted into what H x ok. Now, H x is pairing with thiamine clear first one is A t a is converted into H x what is that H x hypoxanthate. Now, what is happening this is a general diagram which I have given that is during replication each strand will unwind ok. Each of the strand will get unwind. So, one strand will be having H x another strand will be having T. Now, DNA polymerase will do polymerization. So, whichever strand which is having T right uh, what happens this T will not be no longer be pr uh, pre uh, present there. Why the T will not be present there? Because A is converted into what? H x, H x will pair with what? Cytosine clear. So, from A t you are getting what? H x c. Initially it was A t, A t has been converted into H x c. What is H x? Hypoxanthine pairs with cytosine. Now, you have a single strand in which H x is pairing with what? Cytosine. Initially it was A t, it has been converted into H x cytosine. Why it is H x cytosine? I just told you A is converted into ibuzanine, which will pair with what cytosine. Now, what will happen is uh, you are having a double strand in which one strand you have H x, another strand you are having what C, right. So, H x when it is going to the next generation, ok. H x when it is going to next generation, what will happen? H x will pair with C, right this uh, T will pair with A clear with this the T will pair with what A and H x will pair with what C ok. Do not get confused I will repeat once again it was A T A is converted into what H x. So, H x will pair with cytosine you, you keep that later. So, H x is pairing with T now initially right once the damage is happened initially H x is having T, but it cannot because H x can pair only with cytosine. Now, the DNA gets replicated right when it is replicating the strands will get unwind. So, one strand is having H x another strand is having T. Now, DNA polymerase will come and replicate it or, or polymerize it. So, wherever H x is there what will be incorporated? Cytosine will be incorporated in the opposite strand. Wherever T is there what will be incorporated in that region? A will be in inserted into that particular region ok. So, that strand is ok it is that strand does not have any change later. So, but wherever H x was there what will be incorporated C will be incorporated. Again it is undergoing replication. So, one strand is having H x another strand is having what C wherever H x is there what will happen it will it will incorporate cytosine wherever C is there what will be incorporated G will be incorporated. Okay. So, initially what was there A t was there A t will be converted into G c clear with this. So, this is what happened this is the biological consequence of what deamination of adenine. I repeat once again deamination of adenine will result in what I hypoxanthine hypoxanthine will pair with cytosine ok. So, initially A t was there A is converted into H x ok when it is undergoing replication what happened the strands will get unwinded. So, whichever the strand which contains H x watch what will be incorporated cytosine will be incorporated whichever strand which has T what will be incorporated A will be incorporated and that generation continues without any problem. But the previous uh, the other generation where H x is there what is incorporated in the opposite strand cytosine again it undergoes replication. So, one strand will be having H x another strand will be having C. Okay. Wherever H x is there what will be incorporated once again cytosine will be incorporated wherever C is there what will be incorporated guanine will be incorporated right. So, initially this organism did not have uh, G C in that region right it was A T A T has converted into G C. So, this is the biological consequence of DNA uh, deamination process ok. It will be it is it may be little confusion for you when you listen it when you write it it will be easy you just uh, take a sheet of paper and write. Uh, put a DNA strand in what A t. Now, you round A 
a is converted into hx now you put an rr mark and put two different strand one strand which is having hx that is during replication i am talking one strand which is having what thiamine right now dna polymerization happens when it is polymerizing no problem with the dna only problem with the region which is having hx wherever the hx is coming opposite you have to put what cytosine wherever t is there in the another strand you have to put a forget about that that particular replication cycle of t right because it it carry on with the normal replication cycle without any alteration but wherever hx is there c is there again it goes replication unwinding which happens hx will bind again with ce and c will be bind with g later this hx will get, get diluted that is a different story we will study in the replication i mean the dna repair mechanism so initially this dna was having at in that position that has converted into what gc okay right now we will see what happens in the deamination of cytosine many of the cytosine which will be available in the form of what 5 methyl cytosine for the protection of the dna okay so 5 methyl cytosine is nothing but a normal base in case of the dna so deamination happens i told you that are all the three bases are prone for de for deamination one is adenine another one is cytosine another one is guanine so 5 methyl cytosine one it is once it is deaminated it will be converted into thiamine okay 5 methyl cytosine will be deaminated and it will be converted into what thiamine we will see what exactly happens so this is what uh, 5 methyl cytosine okay so this is a uh, 5 methyl cytosine means in the fifth position what will be there methyl group is there i told you in cytosine you have two exocyclic functional group one is in the sixth position it is amino group another one in the second position it is what the keto group what is happening in the fifth position amino group is removed and you are getting thiamine okay we discussed about the structure of thiamine thiamine is having two exocyclic functional group one is 2,6 uh, 2,6 uh, keto and 5 methyl once it once that particular structure is there that is called what thiamine okay now you just see what happens in case of deamination of thiamine i mean deamination of cytosine g is pairing with, pairing with cytosine it is 5 methyl cytosine okay now what has happened the c is converted into what thiamine okay the c is converted into a thiamine so what happen g is pairing with t now okay because cytosine is whatever is there the cytosine is converted into what thiamine due to deamination so initially it was gc gc is converted into what gt when it is undergoing replication what happens it will unwind okay so g will again pair with cytosine once again don't uh, exactly follow this particular diagram this is just for a flow i am uh, giving this so g will pair with what c instead of bu you just think that we instead of uh, bu what what it is pairing it is pairing with c and the c already in the previous generation c already has converted into what t because of what deamination so t will pair with a right thiamine will pair with adenine so during the replication cycle initially there was only gc combination this gc combination has converted into what at combination that is a transition which has been happened so that is the biological consequence of what deamination please recall once again so what has happened it was g and c was there right c is converted into t now it is gt during replication cycle both the strands gets unwinded and dna polymerase is polymerizing so one strand which contains g exactly c will be incorporated there so there, there is no problem in that particular uh, of springs so, and coming to the next one c has converted into t so the t will always pair t is a normal base of the dna so the t will always pair with what adenine okay so initially it was gc and the gc is converted into at okay so that is what deamination so there are repair mechanisms which are available when g is pairing with the t the dna proofreading mechanism or the dna repair mechanism will uh, recognize the, that and rep, uh, it will be removed that particular mismatch will be removed if it is not removed this is the consequence that is g was pairing with c c is converted into t during the next replication cycle g pairs with c and the t pairs with a and at was not there in that particular position in the initial stages so the gc will be converted into at after replication so this is the biological consequence of deamination of 5 methyl cytosine the next one is uh, guanine when once the guanine gets deaminated so you know what is guanine the guanine what is there in the sixth position what is there keto is there in the second position amino is there so once the amino group is removed from the guanine 
pure amino group is removed what is added over there oh so or double bond o is added so this particular component is called what xanthine okay so the guanine is converted into what xanthine but fortunately the xanthine will not change the pairing property okay so initially we have seen that hypoxanthine is there right the hypoxanthine will pair with what cytosine once the cytosine is deaminated it will give thymine once the thymine is produced it will pair with adenine so there is a mispairing or the pairing property has been changed but xanthine will not change the pairing property that is xanthine will combine with cytosine only so there will not be any major biological consequence which happens due to the deamination of the uh, guanine but in the later cases it will be repaired or it will get diluted okay so once it is going through first replication cycle second replication cycle third replication cycle once it is going on like that what will happen it will get diluted so there is no much complications happens due to the deamination of what xanthine or oh, sorry deamination of the guanine okay so this is what deamination process in case of the dna we will just uh, uh, see what we have seen today so dna damage we have seen what is dna damage is the physical and chemical distortions of the dna once the dna damage happens what will happen the entire central dogma will get affected and the organism may die okay so to describe dna damage by various process what are all the important process one is nothing but uh, uh, deamination second one is alkylation the third one is oxidative damage and the next one is pyrimidine damage so today i told you we are con concentrating only on deamination process so to study all this particular process you should know what is the structure of a, a dna and what especially the structures of the bases so adenine i told you six amino you remember like this adenine six amino and guanine it is six keto and two amino cytosine just opposite to that six amino two keto this is for the uh, understanding i am telling you the numbering will be changed because, uh, based upon what the pairing with the other bases uh, and uh, complementarity okay then thiamine which contains 2,6 keto and 5 methyl once you remove the methyl group you will get what uracil okay so in deamination so it is the removal of amino group from the dna so the amino groups are present in three important components in the dna one is what adenine and the second one is guanine and third one is cytosine and the agents which causes deamination is called what deaminating agent deaminating agent the examples are nitrous acid and nitroxyl amine and uh, in case of adenine deamination will give rise to hypoxanthine it pairing property changes instead of hypoxanthine pairing with uh, i mean adenine pairing with thymine hypoxanthine will pair with what cytosine which will give rise to at to gc transition so this is what the reaction amino group is removed and what is added oh group is added this is what the transition and next comes what deamination of 5 methyl cytosine will give rise to thiamine 5 methyl cytosine always pair with guanine instead of that it will pair with what thiamine okay so the thiamine will be produced and thiamine will always pair with what adenine so there will be a transition of gc to at and the deamination of guanine will give rise to a chemical compound called what xanthine so here the pairing property will not be changed xanthine xanthine will always pair with what cytosine so there will not be any much uh, complication biological consequence in case of the dna damage that is deamination which happens into the guanine in the next class we will be studying other uh, uh, other damages what are all the other damages which are left out one is alkylation process next one is oxidative damage next one comes what the pyrimidine dimer formation okay thank you